Hello everyone, and this is Pastor Brent Strohecker at New Beginnings Church in Middletown, Pennsylvania. Welcome to episode 104 of Closer to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can share together in your word and help us now to clear our minds and our thoughts and get our focus on you so that we can understand the message that you have for us in your word. So Lord, help us to get there to the point where we can understand the things that you are trying to teach us and that we can use as lessons to apply to our everyday living. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're in Acts chapter 9. Yes, chapter 9. And we're starting here at verse 19. So this is where Saul is in Damascus and Jerusalem. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. And immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue saying, He is indeed the Son of God. What a turnaround! Because this is the same Saul that is now, well, he's still Saul. He hasn't changed, the Lord hasn't changed his name yet. But this is the same Saul that just a few days ago was persecuting the Christians and ready to arrest them and didn't want anything to do with the good news of the gospel. Now he's saying that he is indeed the Son of God, referring to Jesus Christ. So at verse 21, it says, all who heard him were amazed. Well, can you blame them? Uh, it says, isn't this the same man who persecuted Jesus' followers with such devastation in Jerusalem, they ask? And we understand that he came here to arrest them and take them in chains to the leading priests. So they're like, wait, we heard about this guy. We know that he was coming here to persecute us and he was going to take us away in chains just because of our faith in Jesus Christ. So they're discussing this amongst themselves and they're amazed that this guy now is saying, look, Jesus is Lord. Okay. Um, Saul's preaching became more and more powerful. The Holy Spirit is really taking over Saul and Saul has become zealous for the gospel. Okay. And the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute his proofs that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. So here they went with, oh, this guy is going to try to disprove that Jesus is the, is the Messiah. But now he's given us proof that he is the Messiah and we can't refute it. Uh, and that's a huge, huge, huge turnaround for him. Okay. Um, after a while, the Jewish leaders decided to kill him. Wow. Yeah. Uh, persecution of the church was happening back then. And now the guy that was persecuting the church is now... Uh, a leading voice for the church or is becoming a leading voice for the church and now what happens they want to kill him they want to silence him okay but Saul was told about their plot and that they were watching for him day and night at the city gate so they could murder him Whew. would you go out and preach the gospel knowing that this was waiting for you or this is some people's response to you and think about it we stop short of teaching and preaching the gospel when the Holy Spirit gives us an opportunity to testify on behalf of Christ with someone that we know or maybe even a stranger in the street because we're afraid of persecution. Well, think about it. That persecution that we're afraid of is nothing close to what Saul was dealing with at this point. So I want to call him Paul, but we're not there yet. Okay. All right. So during the night, this is at verse 25. Some of the other believers let him down in a large basket through an opening in the city wall. <laughs> yeah. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. Can you blame them? Because they know of Saul's reputation and they don't know that Saul's life has been changed by the Lord on the road to Damascus, and now he's preaching zealously for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So they're afraid of him. They thought he was only pretending to be a believer. That's a valid fear, isn't it? You know, oh, this guy's only pretending. He's only trying to set us up. And I know some of you have been on the receiving end of someone setting you up. And uh, you know how that feels and you know the kind of traps they lay out for you. And some of you have sprung the trap and some of you have been caught up in the trap and it's been devastating for you. So I get it. And this is what they're doing for Saul against Saul. But think about it. The believers let him down in a basket so he can escape the people that were persecuting him. Now the people he wants to go to and minister to on behalf of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are like, look, this guy was plotting to kill us and we know 
uh, what uh, authority he was given by the Jewish leader. So how do we know he's not faking this so that he can set a trap for us and, and capture us? So, you know, valid concern there. Then Barnabas taught, brought him to the apostles and told them how Saul had seen the Lord on the way to Damascus. Barnabas also told them what the Lord had said to Saul and how he boldly preached in the name of Jesus in Damascus. Then the apostles accepted Saul, and after that he was constantly with them in Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. So you see how it's important for us to fellowship together, and it's important for each other to uphold one another in the faith and also be encouraging of one another. And here Barnabas steps up and says, look, folks, give him a chance. He's the real deal. His life has been changed, and the Lord Jesus changed it in a miraculous way. Let him tell you about it. Let him testify. Please hear what he has to say. And while things like this happen, you have to understand that the Holy Spirit's also at work helping them to come about in a way and in a manner that God sees fit. So that's why we need to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, as it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Um... And that's why also we need to seek his will and all we do so he will direct our paths in verse 6. So it's important for us to have that kind of trust in the Lord. And it's important to give people a chance. It's important to, uh, yes, be guarded and not be foolish. But at the same time, when it comes to matters of the Lord, you need to seek out the Lord and say, Lord, is this true? Lord, show me the truth. Lord, help me to understand uh, what you see in this and how you're involved with this and are you involved with this or not? Or is this just a trick or is this just something uh, that's happening that's going to trip us up and try to set a trap for us and uh, lead us into a situation we won't want to be in? So that's why it's important. We trust in God for these things. And look, they're doing this in the early part of the church because this man was a very dangerous man to them, but Jesus changed all that. And one of the brothers, Barnabas, stood up for Saul and said, look, this guy's life has been transformed by Christ. Listen to what he has to say. Give him a chance and you will see that he is the real deal and he's being truthful with you and not trying to set you up. Okay. And when they realized that and um, uh, found out that that was indeed true, then they were accepting of Saul and he was constantly with them ministering to others in Jerusalem, telling other people that Jesus is Lord and giving the good news of the gospel out. So verse 29, he debated with some Greek speaking Jews, but they plotted to murder him. Persecution at all sides. Okay. Now Paul, Saul, I want to say Paul, but Saul's on the receiving end of this. And now he's starting to see, oh boy, this is what I used to do. Now here I am on the other end of things, but that doesn't deter him. He keeps forward with God's plan for his life and God's calling on his life. Okay. When the believers heard about it, however, they took him to Caesarea and sent him on to his hometown of Tarsus. The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and it grew in strength and numbers. The believers were walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. So in other words, what the believers did is they traded in their fear of persecution and traded in their fear of being arrested for their belief in Jesus. And instead, they put their trust in the Lord and trust in the Holy Spirit, and they had peace. The Spirit paved a way so that they can grow in strength and in numbers and that same thing can happen to us today if we trust in the holy spirit's leading over us as individuals as a church as families as a community as a state as a nation you name it uh if we put our trust in god good things are going to happen and you see where this kind of stuff uh brings the Bible to life before our eyes. And we can see that this is talking about real human conditions and real human events and real human interaction. All these things are showing us, look, you're going to be facing days like this in a, in a similar way to what they faced at their time. However, the key is put your trust in the Lord and good things will happen. And put your trust in the Lord and follow him and he will give you peace. He will show you the way to go and he will show you how to deal with adversity when it strikes. So you see how... We can't take any portion of the Bible for granted because there's something to be learned from all of it. So 
we need to make sure that we open our hearts and our minds and hear the word of God and try to understand what God is speaking to us through it so that we can then apply it to our daily living and become better men and women for the Lord. So until next time, remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you soon.